In today's music industry, there are many successes, but only few artists can lay claim to the title legend. Today, I'm sitting here with a true gospel legend. He's the founder and lead singer of Grammy-winning The Mighty Clouds of Joy, Mr. Joe Lagun. How are you today, Joe? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah, this is a big good. moment. You've got a brand new album coming out in January, and you're celebrating 50 years in gospel music. What's going through your mind? Well, I'm just glad to still be around, you know, after all these years. Uh, come January, it will be 50 years for The Mighty Clouds of Joy. And we've experienced so many wonderful things during those uh, years that the group has been together. We've been through a lot, we experienced a lot, and we're just glad that we're still here uh, after that, that many years. Now you know I want to get into some of the secrets of your success, but we've got to start at the beginning. You were born in the 1940s in Alabama. Tell me what your big influences were for both church and music. Well, I had great influences in, in both because uh, my grandfather was uh, my pastor. He's a preacher, uh, old country preacher. Mm -hmm. My dad was a singer like I am. So when I saw my dad sing, uh -huh. uh, I, I figured out then at, a, at, at the age of seven and eight, that I wanted to do what my dad did. Wow. I wanted to get on stage and sing. Mm -hmm. That's how I started. And once I started, I loved what I did. Mm -hmm. And then I went on to, to Los Angeles and met up with the members of the Mighty Clouds of Joy. First thing I would tell them is put God first. And the, the second thing would be you got to love what you do. Mm -hmm because it's not going to be uh, good all the time. You're going to have ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And because there were, there were times when things wasn't going right, and my members would say to me, well, Joe, it's kind of rough. Why don't we just go back home and get our jobs back, or whatever you were doing before you started traveling? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I would say, no, I would say, you know, we're going to make it because uh, my grandmother always used to uh, talk about things in the Bible. And one of the things that she would say well, to, that I remembered real well, the race isn't given to the swift, not the strong, mm -hmm. but the ones that can endure yes. till the end. I thank God today that we, that we didn't turn around because had we, we turned around, there would be no Grammys, there would be no uh, overseas tours and television shows. We've, we've done just about everything that a gospel group can do. Yes. And here it is coming up on 50 years. Yes. And I thank God we're still here. Now, when you look back on so many great milestones in a 50-year career, including, uh, you know, the big crossover hits at radio and major television shows, Madison Square Garden with Paul Simon, touring with the Rolling Stones, performing with Aretha Franklin, what is a standout moment for you over the 50 years? What do you consider a personal standout moment for you in your career? Well, I would have to say we did Carnegie Hall, and I had heard. And I, the Apollo Theater, too. i got to name the Apollo. When we did Carnegie Hall, Stevie Wonder was in the audience. Mm. And we said, we wondered, wonder what is he, what's he going to say about the mighty clouds of joy? Mm. Well, later on, I found out that he knew us and, and he loved us. Mm. But when, when someone came and whispered in my ear, said, Stevie Wonder is out there, uh, I said, what? So my knees kind of shook a little bit. Mm. I said, but I got to go out there and do what I do. That's right. So we, we didn't change anything. We went out there and we sang what the Mighty Clouds of Joy sang. And that, that was one of the things that was stand out. And the second thing mm -hmm. is where well, I didn't know if I really wanted to be there or not was Apollo Theater. Mm -hmm. You had heard so many things about right. Apollo. They'd throw rocks at you. 
They throw <laughs> bottles at it. They throw beer cans. Right. We heard so many things. I said, oh, I don't know if I want to sing there. And they said, they only do it if you can't sing. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, if I, if I see a bottle coming flying <laughs> through the air, I know that we can't sing. Right, right. <laughs> but we went on. and uh, But those, those two uh, things will always stand out in my mind is to say, uh, when I went to the Apollo in Carnegie Hall, I could look back down the road and say in my mind, well, Joe, you made it. You made it.